The nasal cavity is a triangular-shaped structure divided in the midline by the nasal septum. It is bounded superiorly by cribriform plate of ethmoid as its roof, separating it from anterior cranial fossa. Extend inferiorly to the level of the hard and soft palate, separating it from the oral cavity. Laterally, the nasal cavity is bounded by the ethmoid air cells above and maxillary sinuses below. And medially, it is divided by nasal septum. If we look at axial images, you can see, they anteriorly open up the nose at the pyriform aperture. And if you look posteriorly, you can see the coina which separates the nasal cavity from the nasopharynx. The nasal septum has bony and cartilaginous components. Superiorly the perpendicular plate of ethmoid bone forms the superior septum. Posteriorly we have the vama bone and anteriorly the septal cartilage. Here we can appreciate on the coronal imaging, you can see this is perpendicular plate of ethmoid intersects with the vama. And this forms the nasal septum. One of the most common variant we see is septal deviation. Usually the deviation occurs at the junction of cartilaginous portion of the septum and vomer bone, and frequently associated with nasal spur. Inside the nasal cavity, we have three pairs of nasal turbinates. We have the superior turbinates, the middle turbinates, and the largest the inferior turbinates. These turbinates are important, not just for humidifying air and acting as filter, but they also define three distinct regions, the superior, middle and inferior metai, which are important as part of sinonasal drainage pathways. We can get some variant anatomy here. One of the most common variants we see is aeration of the middle turbinate, so-called concha bullosa. We also see another variant called paradoxical curvature of the turbinate. This is seen as outward curvature, as compared to normal inward curvature. As we said, there is superior, middle, and inferior meatus. We can appreciate this in sagittal diagram. If we dissect away the turbinates, you left with superior, middle, and inferior metai. The superior meatus receiving drainage from the sphenoid sinus and posterior ethmoid air cells. The middle meatus receiving drainage from the frontal sinus, maxillary sinus, and the anterior ethmoid air cells. The inferior meatus receiving drainage from the nasal lacrimal duct. The superior meatus is located between the superior turbinate and lateral nasal cavity wall, and it is connected with the pterygopalatine fossa through the sphenopalatine foramen. As we said before, it receives drainage from the sphenoid sinuses and posterior ethmoid air cells. If we look at this sagittal cut, we can see the sphenoid sinus and the posterior ethmoid air cells all can coalesce back to this region, which is the superior meatus. The middle meatus is found between the middle turbinate and lateral nasal cavity wall. You can see that easy in coronal images. It receives drainage from the maxillary sinus, the frontal sinus, and the anterior ethmoid air cells. On the sagittal images, you can find it by localizing the ethmoid bulla and its seats underneath that. The inferior meatus is found between the inferior turbinate and lateral nasal cavity wall. We can appreciate it well in the coronal images. It receives drainage from the nasolacrimal duct. The frontal sinuses are air cavities or air cells within the frontal bone. They bounded anteriorly by the frontal bone, posteriorly and superiorly by the floor of the anterior cranial fossa, best appreciated in the sagittal images, and inferiorly bounded by orbital roof. It drains to the middle meatus through the frontal recess. The maxillary sinuses are air cells within the maxillary bone. They are bounded posterior by retromaxillary fat. 
Terrago palatine fossa, and masticative space. Superiorly, it is bounded by orbital floor, and inferiorly, by the maxillary alveolus. They drain to the middle meatus through the ostium, infundibulum, and hiatus semilinaries. The ethmoid sinuses are complex labyrinth of air cells. They bounded superiorly by the fovea ethmoid alus. Laterally they bounded by lamina papyracea. And posteriorly bounded by the sphenoid sinuses. Ethmoid sinuses are made up of anterior and posterior air cells. The anterior are here in green, and posterior are here in blue and they are separated by the basal lamella. They have different drainage pathway. So the anterior ethmoid air cells drain to the middle meatus through the anterior recess of hiatus semilinaries. And posterior ethmoid air cells drain to the superior meatus through the sphenoethmoidal recess. We can see that on the sagittal images, with the middle meatus draining the anterior ethmoid air cells and superior meatus draining the posterior ethmoid air cells. The sphenoid sinus is the air cells within the sphenoid bone. It is bounded superiorly by cella tersica, inferiorly by the roof of the nasopharynx, anteriorly by the posterior ethmoid air cells and posteriorly by the clivus. It drains to the superior meatus by sphenoethmoidal recess. Sinonasal outflow occurs by mucociliary clearance. We have cilia that line all of these cells, and they beat in one direction, moving the mucus and secretions towards the natural ostia of the sinuses. There are two distinct outflow pathways the osteometal complex and sphenoethmoidal recess. The osteometal complex is depicted well on coronal images. The landmark that is important to recognize here is the centrally located uncinate process. If you find the uncinate process, you are now close to the osteometal unit. So there are a number of air-containing structures around the osteometal unit. Here is the uncinate process in the coronal plane, the air space lateral to that is the ethmoid infundibulum. Right at the tip of uncinate process is the hiatus semilinaries. The middle meatus is medial to the uncinate process and lateral to the middle turbinate. The dominant ethmoid air cell above the uncinate process is the ethmoid bulla. It is important to recognize that the uncinate process anteriorly has an attachment to the nasolacrimal duct. So the nasolacrimal duct can be at risk during resection of the uncinate process. The sphenoethmoidal recess is the drainage pathway for posterior sinuses, the sphenoid sinus, and posterior ethmoid air cells. This sphenoethmoidal recess drains into the superior meatus. As you can see in this axial image, this is the sphenoid ostium, this drain into the sphenoethmoidal recess. And the posterior ethmoid air cells join this recess also. And this recess will drain into the superior meatus. So, the frontal sinus drainage pathway, or the frontal recess, is best depicted on axial and sagittal planes. The osteometal complex is depicted well on coronal plane. The sphenoethmoidal recess and sphenoid sinus ostea are best seen on axial and sagittal planes.